Well guys, I haven't actually done one of these in a while. This is my first catch-up video of 2019. And basically, why am I doing this? Well, technically, I have been on spring break for the past week, and I felt that that was the perfect time to start looking at movies that I missed throughout um, early January, February, and even into March. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be looking at most of the films that I missed during those months. So you can basically call this my January to March 2019 movie catch-up. So that's what we're going to do. Um, as always, we try to watch as many movies as possible, and I try to talk about them within a few minutes or even a few seconds to get through them all. And there's 15 movies to get through, so... With all that said, let's get started. A Dog's Way Home is basically just another cute dog movie that panders to its audience and doesn't really do anything new or spectacular. It's just a dog being cute, um, if you've watched the trailers, you've seen the entire movie, you really don't even need to see it. It's just a dog being cute, and it's very bland. Um, Bryce Dallas Howard's um, monologues as the dog get kind of tiresome and annoying, but overall, it's a harmless film that doesn't do anything spectacular or anything. It's just a bland movie that's really not that bad. I'm going to give A Dog's Way Home a 6 out of 10. Serenity. I've been hearing crazy stuff about this movie, about how bad it actually is, how messy it is, and this is an incredibly messy film. I feel so bad for the actors that are in this movie. They are all fantastic actors, and they have to put up with this pretty awful script with a movie that is terribly edited, like really amateurishly bad. And also, it's kind of very bland. It's a thriller, revenge thriller, and um, it does have some fun moments to it once we get to the twist halfway through the movie. That is when the film honestly goes into the so bad it's good territory that I honestly started really, really enjoying myself for all the wrong reasons. Um, this film is bland, but it's also a ton of fun with hokey acting and just a terrible script and just a misguided attempt at a really interesting thriller idea. I'm going to give Serenity a 5 out of 10. Velvet Buzzsaw, a Netflix original movie that I've been hearing a lot about. It's directed by Dan Gilroy, who created Nightcrawler and also directed Roman J. Israel Esquire, a movie that people didn't really like, but I actually thought it was quite all right. And honestly, I thought this movie was quite all right, too. Um... It's very much a satire of the um, art world, and Jake Gyllenhaal does an excellent job here. He is great. The movie does suffer from too many characters, and the first half is honestly very, very good. But then the second half of the movie just becomes your typical sort of slasher or just horror movie in general that um, is not as good as the first half. I'm gonna give Velvet Buzzsaw a 7 out of 10. What Men Want was a movie I was not looking forward to. I saw the trailers, they just didn't do it for me, and I walked away watching this movie and kind of enjoying it. Um, I have some problems with it, specifically the first act of the movie I thought was absolutely terrible, but Taraji P. Henson does an excellent job in the film. She always gives 100%, and the rest of the movie is honestly 
quite funny in a lot of places. Not all the jokes work, but I was thoroughly entertained through a lot of the film as she was hearing men's thoughts, and some of them were really actually funny. So it's a harmless comedy that's not great, but it's definitely far from a bad film. I'm gonna give What Men Want a 6 out of 10. Cold Pursuit is your basic revenge thriller from Liam Neeson and is yet another in his catalog of revenge thrillers, and this one's a pretty fun movie. Um, it's nothing groundbreaking or particularly special, but it is yet another fun Liam Neeson revenge thriller with a lot of quirky moments and a lot of awesome action as you expect from a Liam Neeson vehicle, and it's overall a fun movie, but honestly, after watching it, I don't really remember it that well, so it's not going to stick in your head for a while, at least. It, it's just a pretty fun movie. I'm going to give Cold Pursuit a 7 out of 10. Yet another possession film of a young child, and it's mostly a bland type movie. You've seen better movies like this before, like um, The Omen, for example. This movie takes a lot of inspiration from The Omen. Taylor Schilling is really good, as well as the young boy playing the uh, little boy. He is really good. Um... I think the movie does some stuff really well, but also I think it falters in a couple of areas. It's not particularly scary or anything, but it is an alright horror film that has some moments of um, just inspiration, but it's not particularly memorable. I'm going to give The Prodigy a 6 out of 10. Isn't It Romantic was a film I was looking forward to. Um, I think this is what um, the Amy Schumer movie that came out last year, I feel pretty, should have been. This movie is a fun, funny film with um, a lot of likable characters. The lead actress is amazing. Uh, the best friend character is fantastic. Um, I love the idea of somebody living inside a romantic comedy. I thought there was a lot of great moments there. There's a lot of good music numbers in the film. And overall, I just had a lot of fun while watching this film. It's not without its flaws. Um, some of the stuff near the end uh, I don't exactly like because it does shove its message in your face a lot. But overall, it's a fun movie, and honestly, it's one that I would like to see again. I'm gonna give Isn't It Romantic a 7 out of 10. Happy Death Day to You, the sequel to Happy Death Day. Now, I just recently watched Happy Death Day for the first time, and I thought it was a very fun um, movie that um, dealt with horror tropes in a fun way. And it was also just a fun movie overall. And this film, I think, is still just as fun. However, it does have its share of problems. Um, it is very much the same movie as the first movie. If you've seen the first movie, you have seen this movie. There are moments in this film that people are going to think as dumb. And I understand that. The film is very dumb, but that is what I actually really liked about it. I liked how stupidly fun this film got, and it was stupidly fun. Um, Jessica Roth, I think is her name, does an excellent job here. In fact, they give a lot of depth to her character that wasn't in the first movie, and it was what made the movie for me and made it definitely different. I thought this film was a lot of fun. Um, it does have its problems with it just not being as good as the first movie, just because it's just not as good as the first movie, and also just because um, 
it's basically the same movie as the first movie. Um, it's not bad or anything, but honestly, I still had a lot of fun watching this movie. I had a lot of fun. It was a blast from beginning to end with all its dumbness. I'm gonna give Happy Death Day to you a 7 out of 10. Next we have Fighting With My Family, the true story of Paige from the WWE and how she became a star, and I really loved this film. Not just because of the story and everything, this is a story we have seen countless times before. It's nothing new, but what is new is this character. I love the character of Paige, and I love her struggle. I think she's a very likable character in this movie, and I think this movie is incredibly funny. I was laughing most of the time throughout this film. I thought it was really well done. Um, I like the relationship between her brother, who doesn't make it into the WWE, and I like that the movie focused on kind of his life after he doesn't get into it, and I thought that was really good. Florence Pugh is one of my favorite young actresses working right now. She has impressed me in every role she has been in so far. I love her, and I love this movie. I'm going to give Fighting With My Family an 8 out of 10. Climax is a movie that is definitely not for everybody. It is very art house. It is very abstract, but it is something that I think is interesting to watch. Maybe not enjoyable to watch. Um, the film is about a bunch of kids that take LSD and a nightmare ensues as they fight against each other and everything Everything goes wrong as they try to kill each other, as they get set on fire. It's horrifying to watch, but I do love the camera work in the film and how it's mostly done in one take or looks like one take. And also, it does have that feeling of making you feel like you yourself have been drugged, which was really cool to see. The film does suffer from... Honestly, the entire first half, which is um, made up of dance scenes, which honestly are very well choreographed. And also, um, it just has a very extended, very long prologue that is not very interesting. And also, it just takes a very long time to get to the real meat of the film. Overall, it's not comfortable watching, but I thought it was an interesting film to watch. I'm going to give Climax a 6 out of 10. Triple Frontier is an interesting film. I found out while watching this film that Catherine Bigelow was originally going to direct this film um, some time ago, but didn't. And uh, originally it was going to star Tom Hanks, and I think... That's crazy. But what we get is a really fun heist movie with a stellar cast from Charlie Hunnam to Ben Affleck to Oscar Isaac to um, Pedro Pascal. All these guys are excellent. I think they work well together. And overall, it's just a fun little thriller that um, is completely disposable, but you're going to have a fun time while watching it because I think the actors sell the movie. They do a great job working off each other, and it's overall just a fun experience to watch. It's on Netflix right now, so I think you guys should check it out. I'm going to give Triple Frontier a 7 out of 10. Next we have Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase, a um, update of the original source material taking place in modern day, starring Sophia Lillis from It, and honestly, this movie is definitely not made for me. It's not a great film, but honestly, I was having a lot of fun while watching it. Um, I think that's mostly due to Sophia Lillis. She's just so likable in the film. 
She's a lot of fun. The movie is not like a theatrically released movie. It definitely feels like a made-for-TV movie, and that's kind of the quality you're going to get. But it does have some really good actors in it, and honestly, it's a fun disposable adventure. I'm going to give Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase a 6 out of 10. Next we have 1%, or Outlaws as it's called in Australia. This is a Australian film that was called Outlaws, but um, it got distribution over here when um, A24 decided to distribute it. It's actually a 2017 film, and they renamed it 1%, and it's a biker film, as you can suggest from the title, and it's honestly pretty bland pretty laughable at times, but it does have some really good acting in it, and uh, that's the one part of it that I think is actually good. Other than that, it's basically just a basic, bland, kind of ugly-looking film that is basically just another revenge thriller in a way. It's kind of boring. It feels like a rejected episode of um, Sons of Anarchy. It's just not my cup of tea. It's not horrible or anything. It's just incredibly bland. I will say, though, that the third act is pretty exhilarating and fun to watch, and that's about it. I'm gonna give 1% a 5 out of 10. Next we have The Hole in the Ground, another horror film about a boy being possessed, and if you have seen The Prodigy, you've seen this film. They're more or less the same film, except this film, I think, is not as good as The Prodigy, but they're basically on the same level. And um, I do like some stuff of it, particularly the acting from everybody in the film is really really good. I do love the visuals in the film, even though they are incredibly depressing and bland to look at. I think it is filmed very well. Um, also, um, I like the whole idea of this giant sinkhole being the cause of evil, and um, I do like seeing the mother just become so stressed out and you start to wonder if it's her that is, you know, just becoming so paranoid, or if her son is really possessed. And it's not a terrible film, but it's not a great film either. I'm going to give The Hole in the Ground a 6 out of 10. Next we have Five Feet Apart, a movie that, honestly, from the trailers, I really wasn't interested in. This type of film is just not something for me. I feel like it panders to its audience. I think it tries so hard to make you cry. And I feel like that's what these movies are made for. They're made as tissue movies for people to just sit down and cry in. And um, honestly, it's not exactly that. It is a well-acted film. Um, Haley Lou Richardson, I think is her name, who is the lead, is incredible in this film. She is the heart and soul of this film and is excellent in every scene she is in. As well as Moises Arias. Moises Arias from Hannah Montana is one of the best parts in this film, and I loved his acting in this film. He was so, so good. I loved his friendship with the main character. They, it was just so beautiful to watch them. However, I think the one part that does suck in this film is Cole Sprouse himself, who, um, whose character I don't really care for at all. Um, I didn't find him likable or charming. And um, overall, the film is very likable. However, I do feel it panders, as well as it's just 
another one of these, and I really don't like watching films about people dying. Um, it's not a particular genre of film that I really, really gravitate towards or like watching. Overall, it's a fine film, just not anything spectacular. I'm gonna give Five Feet Apart a 6 out of 10. Wow, I can't believe I actually got through all those movies in such a little amount of time. I thought this was going to take a lot longer, but those are the 15 films that I watched throughout um, my spring break. Um, that's basically what I did during my spring break, was basically just watch a bunch of movies. Um, even though some of them aren't the best, um, I still enjoyed watching them overall. There's some films that aren't that good, but there was nothing that I thought was outright terrible. But guys, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I enjoy making these catch-up videos. I think they're honestly a lot of fun. Um, I'm also going to create a um, list of um, the reviews in the description below. I'm going to uh, put the time codes there, so... Uh, look for that. Um, of course, you're watching this at the end of the video, so it doesn't really matter, does it? All right, but... <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I got for you. So I want to thank you for watching this video, and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next review.